Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first uh, episode of the Comic Book Showcase, a new podcast from the fine folks at the Marvel and DC database. Um, and uh, we've got uh, a number of uh, people here joined us uh, today from both uh, Marvel and DC side, and we're going to talk about some very interesting comic book related topics. Um, before we get right into that, maybe we'll just introduce um, uh, everybody on our panel today. We've got uh, Billy Aerosmith uh, from the uh, DC database. Billy, introduce yourself. Hi, Billy. I've uh, been working on the DC database since 2008. Love Batman. <laughs> what I spend all my time talking about and reading on. And Aquaman. And we've got also from the DC side, we've got Rab. Rab? Hey, I'm Rab. I have been an administrator on the DC database since 2011, so I'm not as aged and wise as Billy. Get and out. Get out. I now, love you still can. Swamp Thing and Batwoman, and I talk a lot about Batwoman, so suck on that. Excellent. And Mike? Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Mike. Um, I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm just a huge geek in general. I love comic books and video games and toys. Um, I am a huge Marvel fan. I love Spider-Man. Um, that's about it. Excellent. And Elena? I'm Elena, and I love comic books as well. Also into all of the the best of the the geeky things: comics, video games, movies about comics and video games. Um, and I'm here uh, to mostly talk about the Marvel side of things. And my favorite Marvel characters are Captain America and Jamie Mandrox and Chamber from Generation X. Excellent. And uh, my name is Jamie Hari. I'm the uh, founder and editor-in-chief or administrator of the Marvel Database, as well as founder of the DC Database. And uh, we'll be joining you for the next, uh, hopefully, long, long time, once a week, every week. Um, we'll be uh, publishing a new episode, and you'll see uh, additional administrators and, and followers and, and fans, and hopefully also some contributors from uh, the comic book industry, writers, artists, um, <clears throat> editors... Uh, maybe even a, a guest uh, appearance or two throughout the course of our podcast. But so anyway, thank you very much for joining us, and and now uh, we hope you uh, enjoy our, our new podcast show. Um, so we're going to jump right in and start talking about a few things that are uh, coming up right now in the uh, in Marvel. Uh, sorry, in the yeah, we'll start with Marvel uh, in the Marvel industry. Uh, we've got um, a new movie coming in theaters April fourth, Captain America, uh, the Winter Soldier. Um, why don't we actually shoot over to Elena? Elena, why don't you tell us a little bit about Captain America and who uh, who else is going to appear in this movie and, and uh, what's sort of the, some of the background there? Well, I'm really excited about going to see the Captain America movie. Um, we got uh, uh, the returning actor from the previous two, uh, the Captain America movie and Avengers, Chris Evans, again. Um, and the character, or the actor who played Bucky, uh, in the Captain America movie is going to be returning to play the Winter Soldier, which is very exciting. And we're going to see the Falcon, and also co-starring in that is Black Widow again. Um, yeah, Captain America has been around for a lot of years. He was created in the early 40s as a protest character uh, before the United States got involved in World War II. Um, I only really lasted for a couple of years. By the end of World War II, uh, superhero comics were not nearly as much in vogue anymore, and the character returned uh, in, I believe, Avengers number four from 1963. Um, and he uh, shared a title uh, in the late 60s, I believe, with Iron Man, Journeys into Mystery, maybe? That could have been it. I don't remember off the top of my head, um, but then he got his own book uh, in the late 60s, uh, and for a while there, the title was shared with Falcon. It was the Captain America and, and the Falcon book, um, which was um, really uh, interesting because the, the Falcon was, I believe, the first black superhero to have uh, a t his name in a title of a book. Um, that's interesting, actually, yeah. Mike. What do you what do you think about uh, Falcon and uh, the casting, and also the new costume that they're showing for the uh, the character in the movie? 
You know what? I really enjoy the new costume that they've got going. I've heard some criticism saying that it's really far off from the comic book costume, and you know what? It is. I mean, for the most part, the new movies have been going towards the Ultimate Universe, and they've slowly been bringing in part of the uh, 616 Earth universe, and I enjoy both very, very much, um, and I enjoy the way that they've set up his costume. It's very um, modern, very technologically shield. Um, like persona to it. It's I really enjoy, it. and the casting I think is going to be really good. Um, but you know they can always play uh, what they did with Iron Man and change the casting through the halfway through the movies. I uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see Anthony Mackie portraying a good guy after his role as the villain in Eight Mile. <laughs> such a such a career defining performance. You know what? I'm sure nobody remembers that anymore. So it's <laughs> all I can see is Yeah, you know what? He's going to be a able villain, to bring a... but a coward. Well, I mean, now it's pretty much like he can start off with a fresh start because I'm pretty sure half the world has no clue who he is. And so starting off as a major supporting black character alongside Samuel L. Jackson, it's going to be the perfect role for him. So one interesting um, piece of news, the actor who signed on to play Bucky, or Winter Soldier as it were, um, I believe has signed a nine-picture deal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, that, so that'll be very interesting to see. Obviously Marvel has big plans for this actor and this character and the evolution of this character throughout uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, what, do we ha what do we think in terms of what the plot might uh, be of this upcoming movie? Uh, do you think they'll pull from uh, an existing storyline in the comics, or do you think they're going uh, net new here, uh, something for, uh, for everyone that's uh, never been seen before? I definitely think that it's going to have a very Brubaker sort of flavor to it. Um, there were there have been a lot of stories in the comics since the 60s with bringing back Bucky after his death. Um, but the, the whole Winter Soldier, the whole hardcore, um, straight shooting, badass Winter Soldier, that's all, that's all Brubaker's creation. Um, it's probably the, the introduction story like they usually do, you know, with the, the every time Spider-Man gets rebooted, we get a movie of his origin story again. Same thing with Superman. Well, I think one of the biggest things people are talking about with uh, the Bucky actor getting a nine-picture deal is, are we going to see Bucky Cap? Are we going to see uh, Bucky Barnes becoming Captain America the same way he did in the comic books? And I don't think, uh, I'm trying to think of the other superhero movies that have seriously killed off a main character. Um, and I'll be very interested to see if Marvel is going to actually terminate uh, Cap the Cap, Steve Rogers at some point. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, actually the word on the street. Um, spoiler alert! Not that this is confirmed, but uh, I think they're actually going to kill uh, Nick Fury. Uh, is sort of the word on the street. So it'll be really? interesting. Yeah, that's. Uh, there's been a lot of rumor, and then based on, if you look at some of the footage in the trailer, you'll see um, what <coughs> very much looks to be the end of Samuel L. Jackson's run <laughs> on the character. So it'll be interesting to see how um, that plays out and uh, if there'll be changes within S.H.I.E.L.D. as a result. And, and well, I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure that he will be succeeded by his son, who also takes the name Nick Fury, who we've and, never seen before. And is white. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as I'm aware, Samuel L. Jackson has a nine-picture uh, deal going with them, so he still has a couple movies that he'll need to do in order to fill out that uh, contract, even after Avengers 2. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do it. One word, flashbacks. That's true. <laughs> that Dream movies. sequences. That's exactly where I was going with that. Uh, so, Rob, uh, just a, a question for you, Rob. Um, what would you like to see in, in this? T like, what, what interests you in these sorts of storylines? You, are you more of a fan of uh, well-established uh, storylines, or do you like to see uh, new material? Like in a movie? Um, yeah, just in DC Marvel movies at all. Uh, just when you see comic book movies based on your favorite heroes, and would you rather see stories you're familiar with or new ones? Well, I get a lot of what I like to call origin story fatigue, where you just get tired of seeing the origin stories over and over again, but I really want to see... I want to see new stories that are worthy of being included in canon. Like, you imagine this could be in canon, but I, I, I don't want to see direct adaptations, but in lieu of 
a really, really good original story, that's kind of that the the yeah, origin what? story thing the origin story thing kills me that we keep I don't understand how they keep thinking it's a good idea to like all right I've got a great idea for a movie about Green Lantern who is this energy blasting sci-fi police badass and okay the first hour and a half of the movie he is just an alcoholic pilot trying to get his girlfriend back but then the last thirty minutes goes crazy I know right. So on the note of uh, sort of continuities and, and um, you know, bringing everything into canon, we should probably talk about what's happening in the DC Universe or the new DC Universe or the new 52 since basically nothing is canon anymore and they've totally revamped everything. So, um, Rob, maybe you're the best. Uh, why don't you give us a little intro? Tell us about what uh, sort of spurned the new 52 and a little bit about, uh, a little bit about that. Um, well... I suppose what caused the new 52 to come into being was, I don't know, I don't know. I've done research and I don't really know for sure what made it necessary, but I know that I felt it kind of, I was not in on the last four or five years of DC continuity before the new 52 showed up. And then I jumped on and now I'm neck deep in it. So. It's, definitely a, it's definitely a matter of continuity lockout. Um, yeah. Where I know there are a lot of characters who I've personally struggled with, like recommending old Flash comics to people. I never know where to start uh, because that, like, it, you never, especially with characters who have been going on since the '60s. All of the formative books came out during the Silver Age and are almost impossible to read now. And everything is so steeped in history and legacy that it can be very difficult to find good jumping on points. It's not true of every character, but I definitely see why at least they thought of the New Fifty Two. On the other hand, on the other hand, I was reading Birds of Prey, and I was reading Booster Gold, and I was reading a couple of other titles. Uh, oh, the one with Catman, uh, and they so were all Secret canceled. Six. Thank you, Secret Six. They were all canceled for the New Fifty Two, and the only one that I the I and I I picked up uh, <coughs> Batgirl and yeah. did not enjoy it. I picked up yeah. the New Justice League International, and it was. It was, oh utter, my God. it was horrible. This is like international was a mess. And I and I loved all those characters and I loved so many stories about them and with the new the new reboot there, yeah. I was like, Well, I yeah. guess there's there's nothing for me in this new fifty two. That's Justice certainly League. a hallmark of the new fifty two right now. I, I don't want to say hallmark, but it's definitely a quality of the new fifty two that you've got some really solid stuff over here. And then you've got some really, really, there's no gray area, really. It's just solid or unreadable mess. I think definitely the overall quality of books across the line probably hasn't changed. Like, the number of good books and bad books at DC, or, like, the ratio, isn't really that different than before the reboot. They just kind of mixed them around a lot. But the bad, now, the, the bad books are probably a lot worse <laughs> My problem with all these stories right now is that it seems that writers have figured out that, you know, from, like, the 70s and the 80s and even, like, early 90s, there was a string of really good stories that really sold well and really popular, and now they're just trying to replicate those, like, every year. Marvel's doing the same thing. It just seems that they can't come up with an original idea, and it's just rehashing the same <clears throat> thing over and over again. I don't know that there's been a new character that's been created that's been really like that's really stands out against like the last 30 years so, so that's a very good point that you bring up is Marvel um, actually Marvel did something right around the same time introducing their new Marvel now line and uh, Robin uh, uh, from our DC database is joining us via chat and she says um, how does the Marvel now compare to the new 52 I mean in my opinion I think obviously with anything, it's at the end of the day, it's a business, and uh, they're out there to make money. And, and I think that um, bringing new readers, attracting new readers, and giving uh, people a, a clean jump on point is important um, to them <coughs> as, a, as a company. But I would say that uh, it, it seems like they've both taken very different approaches, obviously. And um, I don't know if there's a clear winner in terms of content line, in terms of who's writing better stories. But I think uh, I think it's. <clears throat> I, I would like to say that I think DC is doing pretty pretty well with the new reboot. I was actually quite scared for them. Uh, it's a dramatic move. Marvel opted for something a little less uh, dramatic, and, and I think uh, it's paying off for DC, and that's my opinion. 
it is paying off for DC, and in more than just one way. Because if you've noticed with their movies as well, they've started moving towards this one continuity. Because they uh, were talking about recently about how they're going to start with a one continuity for their movies alongside the lines of their uh, their uh, comic book. And it's really interesting that they're doing it, but kind of sad at the same time, because it seems that their movies are following in that same storyline, and you're not getting anything new and fresh. Like, uh, the one Justice League War, I believe it was, was the exact same storyline as the beginning of the uh, Justice League reboot, and then you also had the Flashpoint movie, which was the exact same as the Flashpoint storyline, so, like, why even bother having both, I guess, to hit both markets, but at the same time, fanboys, like, are they going to appreciate that? Yeah, the DC animated movies have been killing me recently. I definitely, as far as at least the animated movies go, I always greatly prefer when they start with an original story. Like, the Gail Simone's uh, Wonder Woman animated movie was amazing. It was I would call amazing. That, yeah, I would call that the best movie that they that DC has, or at least the best animated movie DC has produced uh, in the last ten years. But all of the, it's like they, I'm just seeing stories that I've seen, that I've read a million times before. And I don't need that. I don't need to see All Star Superman and uh, the first appearance of Supergirl in animated form. Yeah, it's like I said, where the balance between a fresh story and seeing something you've already seen done again, but there's also you need to take into account the people who haven't read it or who, like me, yeah, I will not watch. Say, I will. I will not read Game of Thrones because I've got it to watch in front of my eyes. I don't have to read it, which is some people will say is a travesty. But (laughs) (laughs) comic books, they're a visual medium, so it's kind of like they're cannibalizing themselves in that way, and it's sort of sick and sad. (laughs) Yeah, so that's an interesting point you bring up. um, But uh, we have a comment from uh, Nathan from uh, the Marvel Database. He's one of the administrators there. He's joining us uh, from chat as well. Uh, He comments... uh, uh, Disney is buying into the one continuity idea as well. Frozen, Tangled, Little Mermaid were all found to exist in the same universe. Uh, it seems it seems like yeah, right. Uh, it seems like uh, you think there's going to be a bit of a big push uh, from DC to do that as well. I mean, we're we're seeing Marvel do that now uh, with its uh, you know um, DC Cinematic Universe with the Sh- Agents of Shield and the whole uh, you know Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man all crossover. Uh, do we think we're going to start seeing that more from DC and and if so, uh, what do you think the next logical jump-ons are? Well, they're pretty much already saying that they're doing it. With the announcement of the casting for Wonder Woman in the new movie, it kind of shows that they're going to start branching along one line for uh, like the new Superman vs. Batman movie, then to Justice League, and then probably a Wonder Woman spin-off, and then something back in with Superman again, something with Batman. Like, are we going to get a standalone Batman movie? Uh Batfleck, I don't know if I could take you standing alone but on your own as Batman. It's going to be very interesting. But, um, you know, they really should because uh, clearly with Marvel, they've got this one continuity universe going on right now, and it's really working well for them. I mean, you can see how it's going to pull across with the new Marvel's Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and it looks like they've got this like thing locked down. Uh, that's a good point. We also have the upcoming Netflix miniseries. I believe there's four series coming, 13 episodes each, and they're all going to tie into a Defenders movie is what I understand. Um, that's uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage, and then I'll tie into Defenders if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I think that the push is on to bring all of their characters together, uh, make sort of these more uh, epic battles, epic storylines, crossovers. I mean, we started to see that in the, uh, I believe it was early 80s with Secret Wars and things like that. Um, what, uh, just to, just to general question to uh, tangent to this conversation. What's uh, some of your favorite um, sort of major crossover storylines? What have we seen in the comic world that uh, sort of espouses this sort of uh, concept of one big continuity? Invasion! (laughs) Nobody ever wants to talk about invasion. I don't (laughs) want to. You know what? For the most part, I didn't mind invasion too much because it was some aspects of that was a really new idea. (laughs) Um, like, the fact that we had all these people who had disappeared and had been replaced, the way that we had been told they had been replaced could have been a little bit better, but um, for the most part, I enjoyed Invasion as a storyline, especially because of being such a big 
Spider-Man fan, seeing no Norman Osborn back in, like, full power, just, like, giving her. I mean, he was there in Thunderbolts for a while, but in Invasion, like, it pretty much brought Norman back to the forefront. And, like, in a big way, too, because now he's a part of the overall Marvel Universe. It's just not showing him inside the individual Spider-Man comic books. Because Norman Osborn is a powerhouse character. I mean, he's got just everything that a character would need. Um, especially as a villain, but he plays more than just a villain. I like it when he's the Green Goblin on one side, and I like it when he's Norman Osborn. It's it's like J. Jonah Jameson. If they could make him into a villain completely separate from J.J., that would just be, I don't know, unbelievable. So 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 we actually have a number of comments from the from the peanut gallery, as it were. Uh, Kyle, uh, also from the DC database, uh, joining us in chat, uh, mentions uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Infinite Crisis. Nathan from Marvel, uh, Punisher meets Ninja Turtles, Archie meets Punisher, uh, and uh, <laughs> lots of lots of good options. Um, so uh, we've actually uh, had a really good conversation today, and, and we've uh, covered a lot of ground and uh, mentioned a lot of things in Marvel and DC. Uh, who remains? Uh, who's going to win remains to be seen. Uh, but we'll discuss that in the coming weeks in our in our new uh, comic book showcase podcast. So thank you to everyone who joined us, uh, Billy from DC, Rob from DC, uh, Mike and Elena as well from from Marvel, and uh, and all the folks in the the chat. So uh, be stay tuned from uh, for more content and new episodes from us week to week, uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you guys soon. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.